Salutations, greetings, and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Virgil's Eclogue. This is our third page, finishing lines uh, 11 through 15, of course, of the first one. And last time in the Eclogue. And yes, I have, in fact, moved back here. That's in part why this video is coming out late today. I was finishing up everything for my summer work over the last few weeks and then packing up and moving here yesterday. So, yeah, recording this day of. Here is our text, or not our text, our rubric, everything that we're looking for as we go through. Let's get started. Non equidem in wedeo, meror magis, undique totis usque adeo turbator agris, en ipse capillas. Protinus aiger ago, hanc etiam vix tetere, duco. Hic inter densas corilos modo namque gemelos. Spem gregis, ah, silice in nuda conixa reliquit. A little bit sad there, if I'm understanding it correctly. So here we have our first clause. We want to go to our verb in widow, so we have our O there, of course, is going to be first person singular, present, active, and indicative, it means I envy, but if they're not there, it's I do not envy, and then equidem is just a intensifier, it means something along the lines of indeed or verily, so verily, indeed. You normally want to say verily for an adverb of vero. Indeed, I do not envy. Envy what? Probably Tetris, so I'm going to put you in there. Question mark. Mirror magis. Mirror. Got the O-R right there, so that's going to be our first person singular, present tense, again. This is a passive ending, but I believe that this is a deponent, so it's passive in form, but active in meaning, and it is, of course, indicative. It means, I wonder, which is not spelled that way, I wonder, magis, you get the I-S right there, which might initially make us want to think that this is a nominative or a genitive singular of the third declension, but no, this is actually an adverb. The positive degree adverb of, uh, if I could remember, I think it's just magus, uh, very similar to this anyway, uh, is uh, magus. And then for magnus, we've got uh, magno pere is the adverb for that, and uh, I think that, that would be another option to, for him to use here, but for meter-wise, this one's better. So, adverb, I wonder greatly. Undique totis, neither of those are verbs. Usque adeo, this one looks like it could be our verb, but it could also be another adverb with a specific meaning we'll get to. And here we have turbatur, so I'm going to take this as a verb instead of adeo. T-U-R, so that's a third person singular, and it is made off of the present tense. Turbo, tu, turbare would be the forms of this one. So this one is passive, because it is a normal verb, and it is indicative. So we've got a singular object that is being disturbed, confused, thrown into confusion. So look. Agris, that's the wrong case. That doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, and doesn't work. So we don't have a clear idea of what he's talking about here. So let's go ahead and translate the rest of these. Undeque, this means from everywhere. Unde and que, and from where. From everywhere. Or all together. Totis, you get that long is right there, which means we've got a dative or ablative plural. And it could be any of the genders, we don't know. 
But looking ahead at Agris, we've got another IS right there, and this is from Agar, Agris, which means field. So these two match, and again, it could be dative or ablative. Plural, and Agar is masculine, so this would make this one masculine as well. They could, and hmm. So dative or ablative, turbutter. Okay, actually, come to think of it, there is another option here. For certain versions of Virgil's text, the Aeneid, that is, I, I, I don't know why this is the case. I may have known it one time, I don't remember. The I, long I-S plural ending is also used as an accusative. So that could be the case here, in which case it would be the object of this if it took an object, but it's passive, so it doesn't. So I'm going to say that's highly unlikely, though it's something that if, if you read any of other Virgil's other works, you'll want to keep your eye out for it. Be aware that it's there. Okay, so I'm going to hold off on translating those for now. Usque, usque means at every point. or through and through, or continuously, I'm going to put continuously, which is spelled oosly. Okay, there we go. No, still haven't learned how to spell. It's a tragedy. Okay, adel as the adverb. This one has the meaning of so far or so much. Or... So you see it's from odd and eo, eo being from is a id to it. Okay, so then what does this mean? We don't know what our subject is here, so he's probably talking about his, his life or his farm or, or something involving him. Whatever it is, it is being disturbed is being confused is being throwing in thrown into confusion from everywhere at every point so far or so much and then with this we'd probably want to take this as an ablative since the dative doesn't really go with this verb that I'm aware from everywhere at every point so far with the field with and the entire fields it is thrown into confusion I think is what it's saying there. It is thrown into. I move this up here from everywhere with or in the whole fields. Confusion. Period. Then we move on. N N is an exclamation. It, it can be used to direct your attention to something, exactly like eke. So, lo or behold, comma ipse. We got the e right there from ipse, ipsa, ipsum. So masculine singular. Nominative. This is probably referring to Melobius. That, use that one right there. So, myself, Kapolos, not a verb, Protinus, not a verb, Iger, Ago. So, we get the O there. Another first person singing there. I'm not going to parse it. We know that one. I, myself, lead. Kapolos, you got that A-S right there. Kapola, Kapolai, that's going to be a she-goat, but in the plural. Feminine, well, accusative, plural, feminine. Protinus, and then this one is another adverb. Pro, meaning forward, in front of, on behalf of, and then I forget what tinus means, but here, this word together just means forward. So, goats, or you know, the she goats are being led forward, and then Iger is our last word. You got an ER right there for nominative, singular, masculine. This one means sick. So I myself lead, let's say, probably while sick. The 
V. She goats forward. There might go. Hank etiam wix. So there's no verb in there until aha duco. Another first person singular. Pretty easy to identify. Titter, you've got the E right there, so this is a vocative singular masculine. He's referring directly to him, so we're going to say, oops, I don't think that's the first time that I've done that. Titterus etiam. Also, I. Oh, here we've got ago, duco. This this could just be something like alliteration where Virgil's using two different forms of the same word. Or he might mean ago in a different way than lead, because ago can also mean do, or uh, that other word that I can't remember. But do doesn't make much sense in here. So I, I think it's, he's just using two different words so that it's it flows better. So I also lead... Hank, so this is a feminine, I'm doing it backwards again, singular and accusative from hick, hike, hawk. It's a singular. Kapolos is plural, so it's possible that this is referring to one of them, or maybe not. Um, it, it could be referring to something else. I don't see anything in here. Gives us indication. Maybe we'll see something down here that'll make a little bit more sense. All right. Tetris. Also, I lead this one female. Wix is an adverb again. Scarcely. Hmm. That's probably misspelled. One of you will correct me, I'm sure. And I do appreciate it when you do that. Okay. Hic inter densas, corillos, modo, nonquai, gemolos, spem gregis. Ah! Da -da 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 -da. Ah, here, here, here's a verb. So you've got an IT, so that's going to be a third singular. Reliquo, liquere, reliquui. So this could be present or perfect tense. You've got present tense there, present tense there, present tense there, present tense there. I think present tense makes the most sense. Active and indicative. It brings, no, brain failing here. So, I think that when we have conixa and reliquid, this is one, going to be one from the notes from the commentary, which I'm probably not remembering very well right now. I think together they mean bring forth with difficulty. So, got that A right there makes this a nominative singular feminine and this might be the fourth principal part of a verb but I can't think of the verb if it is one so I'm just going to leave it as, as that and konixa of course is going to be referring to whatever that is referring to so she has brought forth with difficulty and we're, we're going to be kind of translating this backwards so in nuda, prepositional phrase there. This is taking the ablative, singular and feminine. And this, of course, means naked, or it could mean in the open. So out, out of covering, this is not some somewhere where one would want to bring forth with difficulty. I'm just going to say in the open. Silica. This is a noun. I've got the E right there. So this is going to be ablative from a third declension. Singular and I think it's masculine. And this means a, a like a, a flint stone. It could mean a crag or it could mean a cliff. And then in that... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I've got... These should go together. Unless I have misidentified, uh, I initially identified this as masculine correctly. So if you give me a moment, I'm going to double check that. I'll come right back.
My dictionary is still in the car, which is a bit away, so I'll leave a note. Let's move on. So, if, when I get my dictionary, this is confirmed as feminine, then it's going to be on the open rock, or on the open cliff. If it's incorrect, then it's going to be in the open with a flint. And I think on the open flint, on the open cliff, makes a lot more sense. We've got another exclamation here. This one is going to be sad, no doubt. Spem Gregus. So we've got space, 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 spem, spe. This is accusative, singular, feminine, hope. Gregus, I asked right there, is genitive, this should be capitalized, singular and masculine hope of the flock. And this should already give you an idea of what's going on right there. Just that phrase there with this. Ah, maybe alas, though this is not one of the alas words normally, or officially. I don't know. Gemelos, accusative singular, not singular, accusative plural right there. This is masculine. Namque, this is an, another intensifier, a combination of nom <laughs> and que. For and, or for indeed. Modo, this one means only, merely, just, or, or soon, recently. Coriolos, this one is another accusative plural. And yeah, masculine. And this one means uh, hazel trees, I think. So I'm going to hold off on writing all that down. Densas. Early in the morning still. Densas, is, we've got the AS right there. So this is an accusative plural feminine. Inter, prepositional phrase right there, densus coronos. So, here's yet another instance where my notes might be wrong, and this might not be masculine, but it might be a second declension in form, feminine in meaning, with densus modifying it. Yet again, when I get my dictionary a little bit later as I'm editing this, it will confirm or deny that. I'm going to assume this is correct. Inter takes the accusative. These two go together, maybe. Hick. Hick could be from hick, hike, hawk. But this one, I think, is already telling us that we've got a feminine subject. So this one instead should be the adverb for there. Or is it here? Ibi is there. Hick is here. So here, among the dense hazel trees just well this this was probably Moto's probably giving us a time here only I suppose it could be going and modifying this only having brought forth with difficulty for indeed only having brought forth difficulty or just having brought forth with difficulty. I, I think I'm going to go with just. Having just indeed gemelos. This is twins or double or paired. I'm going to go with twins. The hope of the flock. In the open frag, she brought forth with difficulty. So I think what he's saying here is he's he's leading the flock, and then he's got a a. Uh, she goat that's pregnant with twins, and then they get. She, she goes up into the, cro uh, the the crag of the rock, and she she brings them forth there. And he, he might be indicating that she died, 
or, or that perhaps the twins died. And, and this, this is part of the reason why he's sad. I, I don't know. Maybe the second half of his speech will clear that up for us. Maybe later on in Echologue 1, Virgil will let us know more. But there we have it. Thank you very much for joining me today. Sorry that this has been horribly, horribly long, and I don't have my dictionary with me. And that's such is life. Hope you have a good day. Wally. What? You're still awake? Why are you still here, then? You should be reading a book. Or, if not reading, you should watch one of these other videos. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. See you next week.